Welcome to the Original Gangsters Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Bernstein, Quick Hitter Edition. We haven't been to Canada in a couple of weeks. We're going back up there right now. Um, you know, it does nothing slowed down. Uh, there's still news coming at us at a rapid clip related to uh, the war between the Rizzuto mob in Montreal and the Hells Angels. There's a lot of layers to this conflict, um, but there have been Two arrests made over the last two weeks related to two of the murders uh, in this conflict that's been going on for 18, 19 months now, half a dozen bodies or so, um, and two that dropped in February of this year, there have been arrests. So one was a murder that we didn't really know about, um, and now we're able to kind of contextualize uh, we knew about the first one. So let's first talk about uh, Jean Brandon Celestine, right hand man of his big brother, Jean Philippe, sorry, Jean Philippe Celestine, aka the butcher, uh, who is right now the one of the godfathers of the of the street gang world in Quebec, uh, had been the number two man under Greg Picasso Woolley, who was the kind of original godfather of the Quebec street gang world. Woolley got killed in November of 2023, was caught in the middle of Hells Angels and Rizzuto's. He was trying to kind of play both sides of the fence, upset some of the Hells Angels by opposing them um, in, in some business circumstances. And, uh, he was murdered on November 17th. A Hell's Angel affiliate was then murdered uh, 10 days later on November 27th. Dooney Guerin. Um, and then we move into 2024. And John Brandon Celestine is gunned down on February 17th, leaving his brother's headquarters, Elio's Restaurante in Little Italy, Montreal's Little Italy, gunned down as he approached his car. Uh, one of the shooters was arrested, uh, or charged, I should say, charged this past week. His name is Nestor Manuel Pintos Chu, 35 years old. He was brought into custody back in April on a gun charge, and then they indicted him last week in the Celestine murder. So that brings us to a murder that happened about 11, I'm not about 11 days before that on February 6, 2024. We hadn't really known about this. Um, at least us here at the OG, um, not a lot of mainstream media coverage of it at the time. So a former Picasso Woolley Lieutenant by the name of Stevens, no chance Cantave, great nickname, uh, was an enforcer. Uh, came up under Woolley uh, in his crackdown posse in his syndicate era back in the uh, late 80s, 90s, 2000s. Knew the Celestines from, from that. Um, it looks like after Woolley was assassinated, it appears that no chance sided with the so-called Rat Pack mob led by Anna Atna, a.k.a. Tupac, who was then anointed the successor to Wooly as godfather of the street gangs. I know this gets confusing and there's, there's alterations in this narrative every two seconds, it appears. Um, it appears that no chance went with uh, Tupac and the Hells Angels. The Celestine brothers went with the Rizzutos. And on February 6th, No Chance was killed in a Montreal shopping mall parking lot, was found dead behind the wheel of his car. And in the last week or two, a 16-year-old uh, has been arrested for that murder. Uh, the name is not known because he is a minor, but he is allegedly, allegedly one of the, the trigger men in the No Chance murder. It appears that the John Brandon Celestine murder was in response to the No Chance murder. 
it was 11 days apart. Um, and since the Celestine murder, Jean-Philippe the Butcher appears to have jumped ship from the Rizzutos and is now replaced Atna, according to our sources, as the Hells Angels point man uh, for street gang affairs. So it's like we have two street gang godfathers that appear to have both been anointed in that position by the Hells Angels uh, in their quest to absorb the Rizzuto mob and their, their the Rizzuto mob street gang operations. Um, it, it gets more confusing uh, by the second. And but we have two arrests in these cases. It's great to know that this uh, no chance Kentavi murder happened. We didn't we didn't even know it it, it had taken place. So now we know that. Um, I, I also want to note that what's unique, what appears to be unique about this particular conflict between the Hell's Angels and the Sicilian Rizzuto mob, as opposed to other mob wars in more modern times, and I'm thinking in the United States, uh, places such as Philadelphia in the 90s, in New York with the Columbos in the 90s, in Brooklyn, Boston in the early 90s with uh, Cadillac Frank, late 80s. Um, those, those hits weren't being contracted out. They weren't being farmed out. Those hits were being carried out by members of the groups that were at war. It appears that throughout this entire war, all of these hits that are being ordered by both sides are being farmed out um, to, in this case, a, in one of these cases, a 16 year old, um, in, in other cases, guys that are very removed from the top echelon, uh, the shot callers in these wars. Marty Robert for the Hells Angels and, and Leo the Lawyer Rizzuto uh, for the Sicilians, respectively. So I don't know what that says, but it's definitely makes some type of commentary about all of this. Um, I think, you know, more insulation, more buffers, but you also have more opportunities for things to go wrong, I, you know, in my analysis of it. But, uh, just wanted to give you an update. So we have more information on what was happening back in February. We know just you know, a couple of weeks ago, uh, Tony Suzuki, Pet Antonio, I apologize, um, avoided an assassination attempt. So things aren't tamping down, but we're getting some more, you know, context to, to what was happening. So just you know, know that there have been arrests made in both the No Chance homicide and the John Brandon Celestine homicide. There'll be more news to report, I'm sure, as things continue to uh, go off the rails in Canada gangland. Scott Bernstein, OG Pod, out. Mm -hmm.